It's uh, pros and cons diving in cold water. And it's like a couple of knives stabbing you in the face. Warming up. Check, check, check. On the plus side, diving in the winter in the Chesapeake Bay is when you get the highest amounts of visibility. Yeah, it's pretty shallow here, only about uh, seven feet. Copy that. Today we are doing uh, some three-year check-in dives on oyster restoration sites in Harris Creek. It's a tributary right near the mouth of the Chop Tank River on the eastern shore of Maryland. We were checking in on some sites that were planted by the Oyster Recovery Partnership three years ago. So this is a three-year-old hatchery clump. There is a parent shell right on the bottom where all of these oysters are growing off of. And then we've even got some natural spat baby oysters growing on them. And we've got a bunch of mussels, some barnacles, and these are actually all alive. Number one, we want to see elevation. We want to see oysters that aren't just barely sticking out of the mud. Uh, Big clump uh, right here, uh, nice mound of oyster. Um, all in all, uh, pretty, good, pretty good sight. It looks like how an oyster reef should with all of these interlocking, interconnected oyster clumps. You start to have uh, fish that are building communities within the uh, crevices, within the boxes of dead oysters. Um, it starts to provide a, a whole habitat um, right off the bottom before they became a harvestable fishery item. They formed these very, very large structures having a very substantial biological effect on the water column and the inhabitants of the bottom community. Then they were harvested, the structures were destroyed, then some diseases came into to play in the Chesapeake Bay specifically. The population was reduced from ecologically significant one to one that was barely existent. We were diving on alternative substrate sites. In this case, it was a fossil shell that they put down to create a hard layer to then plant baby oysters on. The sites that we're diving on are within uh, Maryland's oyster sanctuaries, and so what's great is we get to see how a natural, undisturbed oyster reef uh, would progress. Not only are the oysters that we put there doing okay, but they're actually recruiting natural oyster larvae in the water column, and uh, that's what you need for a self-sustaining reef. This is different from the hatchery clump that we saw earlier because these are all natural oysters that grew on the substrate. So these were not planted by the hatchery. These are all, these are probably about two years old. What we do is, is monitor a lot of the restoration to try and measure how it's done. We had divers go down with a half square meter quadrat to be able to collect uh, all the oysters within that quadrat so that we can then get a oyster density and get a uh, proportional sampling at uh, each of the randomly assigned points within a site. We have given uh, significant guidance to the effort to see that it's done right. We've been doing this for about 20 years in my lab. So far over the last 10 years when the uh, restoration effort has been very, very intense, I think it's been largely a success. Woo, feel like a new man. We see very substantial reef structures um, that uh, aren't apparent in most of the fish areas. Harris Creek, I think, has been one of the, the most successful efforts. It was really the first most intensive estuary-wide restoration effort. Yeah, that was real cold. Most of those animals, when they're planted for oysters, because they're sequential hermaphrodites, will be males, and over the next three or four years, will turn to mostly females. One of the ideas of the overplanting three or four years down the road is to plant youngsters who are mostly males who will mix with the females and hopefully increase the reproductive efficiency of those populations. One of the hopes uh, of the sanctuaries is that they will produce many, many larvae which stay in the water column for several weeks and will likely get carried to a certain extent outside of the sanctuaries where they will settle and become adult oysters. Good gracious. It's going to hopefully help the fishery 
and the ecosystem of the bay itself become more productive in terms of fish, crabs, and, and oysters in, in fished areas. 